The word hallucination is defined as an apparent perception, as by sight or hearing, for which there is no real or external cause. From this word is derived the name given to a special group of drugs, the hallucinogens. You don't, I don't usually see something that's an actual real thing that I could describe as, you know. Sometimes, one time I saw uh, a lot of faces. Just all these faces appeared in front of me. And they were um, children's faces and oriental faces and old faces and uh, just all kinds of different faces in front of me. And uh, one time I looked in the mirror and I saw just my face just went through all these changes of uh, different uh, emotions and ages and, uh, you know, I could feel all of the things that I saw. Among these drugs, the hallucinogens, are included mescaline, a chemical taken from the peyote cactus, psilocybin, extracted from a variety of Mexican mushroom, DMT, synthesized from the compound tryptamine, and of course, LSD-25, a derivative of lysergic acid and currently the best known of the hallucinogens. From the very beginnings of unrecorded time, men have reached for substances in the world around them that would alter, extend, and materially change their perception of reality. The reasons? Loneliness and fear. Boredom and a desire for the new and the unknown. Exploration and experimentation. The reasons? As varied and as many as the grains of sand on a beach. in 1965 because uh, I was curious about it. I had several friends who had taken it and uh, they told me that they had, you know, very good experiences with it and I was just curious. Well, I was curious what I read and what I've heard and uh, if, it could, if it could help, I was looking for, I was just looking for something. Uh, sort of because I had heard it makes you not only closer with yourself, but with everybody, this sort of love, peace type thing. And uh, I really wanted to find out if this was true. It was a kick, it was a thrill. You know, I, when I first started taking it, it was to explore myself. Well, I found I could only go so far before I, I just ran dead up against myself and I couldn't go any farther. And then after that, I just started taking it for kicks, you know, just to do something. Some have used these drugs to journey into the uncharted tunnels of the mind in search of medical and scientific truth. Others look behind the curtain just for kicks. Whatever the reason, the fact of the matter is the use of these drugs is on the rise, and it would seem valuable and interesting to inquire into cause and effect. Since LSD is the hallucinogen drug currently most popular and in greatest demand, we will center our attention here, and later draw broad conclusions concerning all of the mind-bending drugs. As a starter, here are some hard facts worth considering. LSD is incredibly powerful. Eating or injecting even a small quantity of LSD as one two hundred and eighty thousandth of an ounce can cause such symptoms as hallucination, distortion, panic, impulses toward violence, suicidal acts, and psychosis. Today we know quite a bit about what it does, but very little about how it does it. Scientific studies have shown that the physical effects of LSD include an increase in blood pressure, heart rate, and blood sugar. These physiological changes are often accompanied by nausea, chills, flushes, irregular breathing, trembling, and sweating. 
Recent research on animals has shown that LSD may cause cell damage and lead to serious abnormalities and malformations in the offspring. In one study, four or five pregnant animals were given a single injection of LSD. The results showed early abortion, stillborn, and underdeveloped offspring. In the culture of human blood cells, it was found that LSD damaged the chromosomes in the white cells. In addition to these physical symptoms, there is clear evidence of serious psychological and emotional disturbances resulting from even a single use of LSD. The group use of the hallucinogens at parties is becoming a familiar part of the scene. An atmosphere is created and mass use of the drug becomes the central factor in the lives of many young men and women. The problem is that while the drug is not physically addicting, there is considerable evidence that it can cause psychological dependence. So let's count the cost and take a good look at the results. I remember once it was, I wasn't using um, LSD, it was peyote, which is reasonably similar. And I was in bed, and I was in bed with a young lady, and I turned and I looked at her face, and her face distorted into sort of a flesh-dripping monster face. You know, the features became drawn and like jowls hung and she grew fangs. And I quickly turned my head away and I told myself this couldn't be so. And for about an hour I wouldn't look at her face again. It was really frightening. I could see all around me, no matter which way I was facing. It was just real frightening. I went into this survival land, and um, I was afraid everyone was going to go there, and that things were never going to be the same, and that everyone was going to become real vicious and hateful, and just climb on top of each other to get what they wanted. And I never thought the world was going to be any different than that. A lot of times, everything vibrates. I can. I look at the uh, chairs and they, I can see the waves in them. And it's, it's pulsating, vibrating. And this, I, I can, everything turns into vibrations. It's like everything is falling apart. My eyes are an electronic microscope. And I can see uh, all, the at just all the atoms in everything. Everything pulsates. took the acid around 2 in the morning and uh, started reading this book. And there are sections in it that um, give instructions to a person who is dead. And uh, they tell him to do certain things and hang on to certain things and let go of other certain things, letting, just l allowing the experience to happen to you naturally. And in the course of that, I got very confused as to whether I was alive or whether I was dead. I mean, it was really very, very far out to just not know whether I was alive or dead. So if I'm dead, what is, what is happening? What's been happening with my life if I've been dead all this time? You know, what, what, what is the truth behind all of this? All the results are not yet in. The evidence is inconclusive. The only thing we know for sure is that we just don't know enough. In carefully controlled experiments, interesting results have been reported on the therapeutic use of LSD with the mentally ill, the drug addict, the terminal cancer patient. And in the VA hospital in Topeka, Kansas, a special research program for alcoholics. Well, this, this program was started in January of this year where we began uh, treating five patients for 26 days. Uh, we bring them in on one Monday and they spend one week of uh, getting acquainted and having all the tests and examinations done to keep them busy for the whole week, day and night, practically. The 
second Monday, we give them a small dose of LSD in the five-man ward together. Uh, this is to help the group uh, pull together and in their group experience during its 26 days to also get some good from this. Then the third Monday, we give them a larger dose individually and have each one of them uh, cared for by one of these teams who have associated with them and they give them their complete support. And this is where we aim for the so-called psychedelic experience. Uh, it uh, seems to work pretty well. Of course, it takes time to work through. Also, in this program, we bring these men back every four months for three days. And this follow-up is quite important. Some of the things that are outstanding is uh, I know I kept fighting the religious music. I didn't know why then, but uh, Dr. Coran kept urging me to find out why I was fighting this. And I remember I was just literally scared to death. The uh, thing that uh, affected me as far as the first patient is concerned was the openness which he talked with me. The quality also seemed to be more realistic than he has uh, shown before. These qualities in my head, uh, the good qualities, of course, virtue, love, trust. And then I've seen the other ones, hate, anger, distrust. I've seen them all in my head, and it was like I was strangling myself like I had to get rid of all the bad qualities, and I was strangling myself fighting against them. And uh, especially the, uh, the looking at the two sides in his head in this process, uh, these things were thought about rather deeply, and the thing that makes the difference here is the emotion that goes along with them. And I just reached up, and it was like somebody grabbed me and brought me up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I interpret this as, for the first time in my life, I wanted love. And I think this is the thing that was probably my biggest problem, is that I thought everybody was forcing it on me and I wasn't going to let them. Yeah. But it's not a question. I, I think of from it's hearing this man uh, report his experience that uh, there definitely is a change as of now. Uh, as far as prognosis is concerned, uh, time. There are currently over 50 research projects in progress under the auspices of the Food and Drug Administration and the National Institute of Mental Health, all part of our continuing search to discover more about the hallucinogens. The questions remain. The mind-bending drugs seem to offer so much, but what do they really deliver? As to what it has uh, to offer, that's a difficult question because what we've seen here have been some things that I, th I don't think most kids thought they were getting when they took the drug. We've seen some kids that have had uh, prolonged psychosis. Some have had to go to state hospitals. Uh, some have been treated for two or three months and have been able to leave. UCLA. Uh, some of them have had severe depressions. Some have been very confused. And some of the groovy hallucinations and the colors that they wanted, they couldn't stop. They got tired of it after 12 or 18 hours, but they couldn't stop the colors. How do they work? And what are the long-range effects of this drug on human personality? Well, we don't know a great deal about long-range effects. People always are asking about chronic brain damage. What we do know First of all, is that the electroencephalogram, or brainwave test, on this we see in electrodes that are on the scalp and also depth electrodes planted inside the brain, we see changes from LSD in man and animals after a normal dose, and these changes last from one to two weeks after administration. In addition, we also see the reoccurrences. You take LSD once, the effect wears off in 12 to 16 hours, then up to a year later, either with stress or without stress, Without ever taking the drug again, you have the same reoccurrences. The people call them flashes or flashbacks. Reoccurrences of all the LSD symptoms in their original intensity. 
certainly this implies that something chronic is going on in the brain. Do these drugs really make possible a richer, more productive, happier life? When we follow them along, what we're impressed with is their whole style of life may change. That instead of being involved in productive activity, they claim that they feel better, and yet this feeling better is alongside of a business of where they've withdrawn from life, they're disregarding their personal appearance, they don't really care about how they function in the rest of the world, and they're involved in a kind of a pseudo-philosophic concern with life and themselves, with a real absence of contact with other human beings. So it's this interesting business of a kind of withdrawal and the statement that this kind of life makes them feel much better and more insightful. Should the federal government exercise any control over these drugs? And if so, why? Uh, it's a simple matter from our point of view that you can't let something get out in a general distribution until it has shown some therapeutic potential. Uh, and it has shown it under certain conditions and you can predict fairly well what's going to happen when you give this drug to a large number of people. This hasn't been shown yet. So we have to be very careful in trying to carry out the necessary research that's going to establish whether or not it has a significant therapeutic potential for people. If it does... Uh, Questions that must be answered. And because we do not know enough, the United States government controls the manufacture and use of this drug in the interest of all the people. Like all the new drugs, the government feels that a reasonable degree of controlled scientific investigation must provide the answers. LSD, mescaline, psilocybin, DMT, and the other hallucinogens, the mind-bending drugs. Do they extend the range of the human mind, or do they simply offer an easy escape from the demands of this world and time? I get up and uh, make love and uh, play the guitar and uh, eat, go down to the beach and go swimming and, uh, and occasionally write some things when I feel like writing and uh, think about how I'm going to get a little more money to not starve to death. And uh, It gets you out of that whole intellectual academic framework that you've been taught to be in all the years that you've gone to school. Not, not only emotional hang-ups, but social hang-ups don't do this and don't do that and you shouldn't associate with these people and this and that. The things that more as you might say that I were brought up with. I just get, I get flashes of people seeing me and it's kind of a schizophrenic thing. I, in a way I want people to see me and sometimes I don't. I'd get up and I'd feel like someone had a rawhide band around my forehead and it was just such a pressure that by afternoon I'd be crying. So every morning I'd wake up with this pressure and every afternoon I'd cry. Do they make possible creative achievement and a more valid and intense perception? Or do they merely substitute an unreal fantasy world for the sometimes harsh facts of reality? Oh yes, I think that I experience things much more intensely now than, uh, I mean, I've uh, hallucinated without having any drugs since I've taken LSD. Had very vivid light experiences. Sometimes I've, I went into lights that are brighter than the sun. And I see patterns in, in everything, in dirt, in trees. There's patterns everywhere. And right then, I hallucinated a fish that just came and swallowed the worm. And I said, oh boy, this is it. This stuff is really as good as they say it is. Drugs are going to flip a lot of people out and probably kill a lot of people. But if they haven't the sense to find out all there is that's been written about anything they're going to use, and if they haven't the discretion to decide whether or not in the final analysis they're capable of handling it, then that's their problem. You will flip out and that's how it is.
can they truly broaden and increase the life experience? Or do they rather contract the user's world until it centers totally and wholly around the drug? Yeah, I was looking for a lot of things because I was really strung out at that time on, uh, on not finding anything in life that was too interesting. A great, great fear of being alone. Just, I, I could be with a group of people, but I couldn't communicate to them. Well, what, what can scare you is that all structure can break down. Everything can become one. And uh, that's sort of scary. Another thing that can happen is uh, when you're really far out, things just can disappear. Because as you suggested, I'm one, allergic to it. And two, I don't like to even entertain the notion that that sort of flip out may occur again. I'm not afraid of anything anymore, which is, you know, has good points and its bad points. I'm especially, you know, not afraid to die. I became suicidal for a while and every now and then go back to there. The true potential of the hallucinogenic drugs remains unmeasured and largely unknown. The danger of lasting physical and psychological damage to the user remains an important factor in the rising use of these drugs. I think a lot of kids say that at first, and then after they're through talking to Dr. Fisher and I, they change their mind. Because we certainly think rebellion is a very healthy thing, and we like rebellion. And we think great changes in society come out of rebellion. And we think uh, that we adults have kind of screwed things up. We haven't done a very good job in the adult world. With the, with the bomb hanging over us in Vietnam, with our crazy ideas about censorship, our crazy sexual attitudes, our abortion laws, we haven't done a very good job. However, I do think that fooling with LSD is like Russian roulette. I don't think it's like uh, swallowing goldfish. I don't think it's spinning a hula hoop or crowding a lot of people into a telephone booth. I think, unfortunately, this can be a permanent, long-lasting, damaging situation. So I'm all for rebellion. I think a great deal of good can come out of it. I hope people who are considering using LSD, however, will think of some of these things. We don't know them all. We do know a few, though. And one of the ones that we really know is that they may be damaging themselves permanently. The facts of the matter suggest caution and a careful counting of the cost. 